Will movie theaters survive? A question that has been circulating in the media for quite some time now. Attendance to movie theaters in the United States has been on a precipitous decline for a while. Even without problems posed by worldwide pandemics, theaters have been seeing less and less Americans going to them. After being asked this question by several of you, I decided to take a look in depth. This video contains statements from Dolby Laboratories, IMAX, and Studio Movie Grill on their futures in home entertainment and the future of movie theaters. With movie studios claiming to make big bucks from video on demand services, next to streaming services more popular than ever, and less people going to the multiplexes year over year, what does the future hold for movie theaters? Hi, I'm Isaac, and this is Movie University. On this channel, we explore various aspects of the movie entertainment industry. Check out some of my other videos related to this topic, and consider supporting me on Patreon to receive a shoutout in my next video. Year over year, outlets tell us movie theaters are going the way of the dinosaur. But yet, hundreds of millions of tickets are sold in the US each year, with movie theaters relatively easy to find in most parts of the country. Contrary to popular belief, a lot of young people still go to the movies. In fact, young people from the ages of 12 to 24 make up the majority of theater attendees. Movie theaters are also posting massive returns for Hollywood studios in the form of billions of dollars and also make up a substantial amount of their revenue. So if this is the case, why does everyone keep thinking movie theaters are going away? The fact of the matter remains that while the population of the United States grows, so too should the number of people going to the movies. But this isn't the case. To be fair to the movie industry, it isn't just movie theater attendance that's seen a steady decline. If we zoom out, you can see that attendance is a problem that is plaguing other entertainment venues. College and national level football, Major League Baseball, and NASCAR have all seen steady declines in their attendance for years, both in person and in viewership. Slightly different, the movie theater industry has come to compete with its own set of competitors. Of course, streaming services have taken off, but so too has the cost of going to the movies. In July 2019, The Hollywood Reporter stated the average price of a movie ticket was $9.26, up 25 cents just six months prior, and up $1.76 a decade before. For comparison, the cost of subscribing to the base tiers of Disney Plus and Netflix is $7 and $8 a month respectively. Streaming services have also come a long way in the last five years. 4K content is available on nearly every streaming service alongside surround sound and high dynamic range coloring to accompany it. TV quality has risen dramatically with the prices of TVs falling rapidly. Television makers try hard to get consumers to shell out money for bigger and better TVs, oftentimes partnering with other companies to get seals of approval or incorporating outside technology altogether. Chris Cookshall at Dolby Laboratories recently told Movie University that every TV sold with the Dolby Vision symbol on it contains Dolby's proprietary computer chips and allows the units to display images in Dolby Vision high dynamic range coloring, currently the industry's leading form of HDR. Dolby works in the whole ecosystem, right? We have creation tools, we have distribution tools, and we have playback tools. And there's technology all along the way. And that's one of the reasons that broadcasters, um, you know, CE manufacturers, content creators like us is because we are in all parts of the chain. And by doing that, we ensure that nothing breaks. You know, as you know, there's a lot, there can be a lot of disparity between different types of technologies. And so right. by using the Dolby Teaching all the ecosystem, we're able to provide a great um, user experience all the way to the end consumer. CCL, Vizio, um, LG, all those guys, they all have Dolby technology inside of the television. High fidelity sound systems have also followed this trend as well. Popular speaker companies such as Bose, Klipsch, Polk, and JBL offer high quality and trusted sound options at different entry price points allowing consumers to enjoy high quality sound without breaking the bank. Another reason to stay at home? Netflix, Amazon, HBO, CBS, and Hulu all invest money to create a lot of original, high quality content. Streaming services now give their own shows and movies theatrical level budgets 
sign on big name actors, and their marketing campaigns are second to none. This can be seen in shows and movies such as Star Trek Discovery, The Mandalorian, The Crown, Stranger Things, Six Underground, Extraction, The Aeronauts, Jack Ryan, and The Man in High Castle. With such a wide variety of content to watch at home on high quality equipment, why would you pay $10 just in ticket prices to leave your home, spend time traveling while burning gas, buy snacks and drinks that are overpriced, with the possibility of having that annoying person who won't get off their phone during the movie? The cost of going to the movies goes up exponentially when factoring in a movie for a family of four. The problem for movie theaters today is that less Americans are feeling the need to leave their homes to see first-rate content. Looking at the last 20 years of movie theater attendance, the number of tickets sold in North America peaked in 2002. By the end of that year, cinemas had sold 1.6 billion tickets, according to Nash Information Services on thenumbers.com. In 2019, attendance totaled roughly 1.2 billion tickets sold, a 25% drop even as the population of the United States increased roughly 15%. There are the obvious reasons to still go to the movies. A big screen, nice sound, and the shared experience of going out with friends. Just because prices are falling for TVs and speakers doesn't mean everyone can afford them or have the desire to do so. Not everyone wants to watch a movie or on a cell phone or laptop, and some others still enjoy the novelty of going to the movies. In April 2020, Universal Studios and AMC Theaters had a public dispute after Universal Studios stated it would look into releasing more movies through video on demand services. This comes after the studio stated it made $100 million in three weeks of release from the movie Trolls World Tour. Studios typically keep around 80% of profits from digital sales and rentals versus the 50% they receive from box office ticket sales. Even after the success, Universal Studios' own internal polling of consumers showed 51% of people who rented the sequel said they would have definitely seen the movie in theaters. About one-fifth said they rarely or never rent movies from digital services, according to the Wall Street Journal. When looking at those numbers, don't forget that huge chunk of money movie studios still make from theatrical releases. Movie studios sure won't, hence why Warner Brothers and MGM pushed the release dates back for Wonder Woman and James Bond. Going to the movies still offers viewers the ability to see movies first before they hit streaming services. One company is optimistic about the future. Ted Lowe, the senior director of brand marketing at Studio Movie Grill, told Movie University that he believes we're living in the golden age of media. With so much content on so many platforms, it's really a viewer's paradise. We don't see that as a pivot from movie going to couch surfing, but rather an opportunity to create destinations and experiences for our guests. One way companies are trying to get you out of your home and into the theater is to give you a nicer viewing experience than a typical theater. You may have noticed in recent years that theater companies are rolling out premium theater formats. Regal, Odeon, Cineworld, Cinemark, and AMC have all rolled out their own premium theater formats or have partnered with other companies like IMAX or Dolby to bring an upscale experience to consumers. Smaller chains such as iPic, Alamo Drafthouse, and Studio Movie Grill have built their business strategies around specializing in a more upscale experience for consumers altogether. These smaller premium theater chains offer food delivery to your seat, alcoholic beverages, auditoriums featuring wide, plush, reclining leather seats with name brand sound systems and projectors. There is also something to be said about the novelty and experience of going to the movies on occasion. While technology has allowed the at-home movie experience to come leaps and bounds over the last 20 years, people still leave their homes for the atmosphere and experience of seeing a movie, regardless of price. We still have stage plays to this day, even though everyone who purchases tickets can see the same storyline from the comfort of their living room. Arguably, this scene from Avengers Endgame wouldn't have been as powerful at home as it would have been in a theater, judging from the reaction from the crowd. Is there a definite strategy to movie theater survival? No one is really sure. Some of the industry point to a model where only big budget movies will be released in cinemas while smaller budget movies get sent straight to streaming options. Still others foresee a future where there will be movies released in theaters 
and on streaming services at the same time. I myself gravitate toward the idea of a future where we see less theaters with release times of movies from theaters to streaming services getting even shorter. Regardless of what the future holds, companies who invest in movie theaters are diversifying to ensure they remain alive in an uncertain future. Such is the case with IMAX who introduced their IMAX enhanced line of movies in 2019 and Dolby Labs offering its signature Atmos sound format in theaters and at home. What do you think or hope holds for movie theaters in the future? Let me know in the comment section below and consider subscribing and supporting me on Patreon or PayPal. This is Movie University, education and cinema.